how have you been able to take advantage of your membership sa Tribe? Kwento mo sa amin, ano na yung mm-hmm. change when it comes to one, siguro getting clients. Mm-hmm. Number two, yung mindset mo na when it comes to to getting clients and delivering value to your yes. clients. Well, anong kaibahan na ngayon ever since you got into the Tribe? Hey everyone, welcome to the Filipino Freelancer YouTube channel. This channel is all about helping you start and grow your freelancing business so you can have more time and financial freedom while working with amazing clients and doing work that you love. In this video, I sit down with Ron Del Val of the freelance community. This is actually my first ever interview and this is my first time actually sharing my story to a freelancing community. Since medyo mahaba yung interview na ito, I will leave timestamps in the description box below. So if you want to skip to a specific question, you can do so. So let's talk a little bit about um, what's going on uh, with you these days muna. So yun mm-hmm. nga, we do like <coughs> offer um, help uh, dun sa mga entrepreneurs who are on the YouTube platform. Uh, mm-hmm. so mostly, anong mostly right now yung mga clients mo? Do you have like a, quite a few or just a, you know, maybe a couple of clients? Mm-hmm. Ilan yeah, so um, tamang-tama nag, ano, nag, nag-list down ako ng clients ko last week ata eh, just to parang ano, uh, organize. So right now I have five clients. Um, four of them, or no, three of them are from the U.S. Isa sa Europe, and then one is from Singapore, which is a former colleague of mine. So nice. yun, yep. Okay, so marami-rami pala. I was mm-hmm. thinking na baka isa or dalawa lang for now, pero mm-hmm. palang clients. Pero right, yeah. you do everything yourself, or do you have a small team that you uh, that helps you out? I actually just have. I got in my first hire technically mm-hmm. uh, somebody to help me edit the videos kasi nga since I offer uh, video editing uh, super time consuming yeah, right so I need somebody to at least help me with uh, the initial edit mm-hmm. para ako I just go in and review and maybe add a few more to it uh, but at least yung part na yun may nagtutulong na sa akin so I have technically my first hire as a video editor and I also have my brother helping me with lead gen naman Okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, dalawa ka palang uh, staff member, kumbaga. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So, before we even talk further about what you're doing right now, syempre yung mga viewers natin, I'm sure, are interested to learn about what your journey was. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, funny enough, I was kind of part of early this year. Mm-hmm. Yep, but, yep. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Um, interesting, because you you started, kailan, kailan ka ba nag-start mag-freelance talaga? Like yung, um, even before the tribe and all. Right. Uh, so 2018, mm-hmm. na ako start. Um, pero uh, it took me months, because technically I started ako 2018, but it took me months to get my first client. Mm-hmm. So bra- around that time, dun ako start. And you were coming in from what? Is it corporate that you came from, mm-hmm. or something else? Right, right. Yeah. So uh, nag- nag start ako uh, after college. I graduated with a degree in management accounting, and in Cagayan and. Um, that time, yung dream ko was to go to Manila and work there, you know, land a high-paying job, you know, the typical um, corporate uh, career. And I was there for almost 10 years, actually, uh, sa, sa the fourth BGC, it's an international bank. And um, almost 10 years there as a finance associate, which is, yun naman talaga yung background ko. Actually, yung family background ko is lahat finance associates. Both my parents are CPAs. Uh, oh. My wife is a CPA. <laughs> ako lang pa, ako lang talaga yung parang na naiba. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, after uh, during my time dun sa corporate, um, I I got into the hobby of photography. That was my first parang um, hobby that I wanted to pursue, and then mm-hmm. um, eventually it evolved into um, videography. So I ended up shooting mga corporate events, events sa company, yung mga um, events, yung mga CSR events, mm-hmm. um, Christmas party, mga video presentations. Doon ako nag-start to like really gain my skill. Lahat ito, ano, yung, yung video editing ko was self-taught. I never went to like a formal school. It was all funnily enough through YouTube, through YouTube tutorials. I learned on my own and I learned by doing basically. So. Um, eventually, I got to a point na parang um, is ito na ba yung ito na ba yung dream ko talaga to stay in a corporate career and parang I felt stuck and I felt 
na I wanted to pursue something that I was passionate about talaga. But mm-hmm. in terms in terms of creativity. Yep. So yun 2018 or 20 late 2017 was turning point talaga in my life kasi uh, my wife and I got married. So um during that time we were in a long distance relationship since and dito siya sa Cagayan noon eh. Um eventually when we got married I moved back here na. So you know yung parang turning point ko in terms of my uh, personal life and my um professional life. I moved here back back here late 2017 and then I started my freelancing journey in 2018. So okay. that's how I started. <laughs> right. So that was so in 2018 uh, that was right a year before you actually encountered uh, the tribe diba tama ba? Right, so, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tama so tama. That that one year uh, from when you started Mm-hmm. Uh, syempre, y- yun nga, you decided to leave corporate. Sabi mm-hmm. mo, uh, pursue this. Uh, this might be something that w- that's worth pursuing. Between mm-hmm. 2018 until right around the end of that year, what were you doing exactly? Ano yung like what sort of projects were you taking in? Right. What was what was your freelancing life kind of? Right, right. So, um, like I mentioned, it took me months to get my first um, online client. Talaga, kasi that time wala akong idea about Um, outreach, uh, network outreach. Wala akong idea about any other forms of getting a client other than online jobs. That ph, uh, yun lang talaga yung alam ko. I, did, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of Upwork at that time. And so, dun lang ako nag nag focus. And since madami ng freelancers don, daming competition, it was really hard to get that first uh, client. And it took me, uh, I exact, I remember exactly. It took me six months. And I don't know how many um, applications yun. Siguro over a hundred. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yun, uh, I kept, I kept trying, I kept trying because yun nga, I wanted to pursue it as a uh, career. And eventually, I got my first client who was from the U.S. and um, meron siyang real estate, parang photography and videography company. So he he um, takes photos and videos of the properties that he is selling or his clients are selling, pala. And right. so I was tasked with editing those videos, uh, which basically propose you online, so that people will get like a virtual tour of the property via video, right? Kaisa kaisa pictures lang. Right, right. That was my first um, client, uh, and I was paid by the hour. None. That was three dollars per hour, and uh, medyo swerte lang ako nun kasi that client did not require me to track my time, so hindi ako naka naka based on new hours talaga basically three dollars per hour we just agreed na it's 40 hours per week so para naka lock in na yung yung uh, rate ko even though it was per hour right and um uh, eventually um i learned actually learned a lot from that client and dami niyang um tinuro sa akin kasi nga it was my first client and and dami niyang binishinare na software he even bought me an ebook about videography so Um, looking back, and dami kong, I, I'm super thankful for that client din na um, and dami niyang shinare sa akin in terms of his knowledge, in terms of resources, and it was a great experience for me uh, starting out. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Cool. So, um, so follow-up question to that. So, during mm-hmm. that time, obviously, you 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 escaped, you know, the 9 to 5, the regular. Mm-hmm. Pero you ended up, you know, at a different setup ng 9 to 5 pa rin. Parang ganun. Yeah, eh. yeah. Sa- may counting flexibility lang pero it's pretty much the same i mean like you still work hourly sabi mo nga although fixed rate naman siya um what was going through your head parang for you ba parang na achieve mo na yung gusto mo or were you still kind of you know itching and looking for that you know yung yung parang setup talaga na you're not bound by by a boss or or something like that right right great question on uh so yeah Initially, masaya ako kasi parang wow, I'm getting paid um, this much, and mm-hmm. I'm doing something that I enjoy, which is video editing, and um, nasa bahay lang ako. Initially, I was happy. Parang wow, um, this was my first time experiencing online um, job, and yeah. super super natuwa ako, super kakaiba siya from my corporate life. Uh, but eventually, Ron, I realized ko na parang meron din siyang limit. Parang okay, freelance ako, pero basically I'm I'm just an employee basically na nasa bahay. Yep. And the biggest thing that really hit me was nung when that when that client ended our engagement kasi nga he decided to go uh, 
in a different path sa business niya. And since ako, I was doing freelancing, but technically yung mindset ko was employee pa din, parang okay, I have one client, this is good. Nung nawala siya, it really hit me in the face na iba pala talaga to. This is not like the corporate where I'm assured of a job or a paycheck you know, every 15 or 30. Ngayon, biglang, bigla, there's a possibility that that client will just up and leave you. And so I ended up, uh, it, ko this was before uh, my our first year anniversary ng wife ko. <laughs> I got this email na the client wanted to end our engagement. Tapos parang natulala ko na, okay, I need to change something. Kasi hindi ganito yung dream ko of a freelancing journey. Yeah. <laughs> That that would have been really hard. I mean, I can just imagine you're you're coming into your first year of marriage. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you promised the uh, you know the sun, earth, and sky to your wife. That was <laughs> big uh, The the main source of income, and I I pulled out my calculator. That wasn't really that big for a monthly income. Yeah. yeah. I mean, co- siguro compared with most local employment, it's slightly mm-hmm. high. It, it has a little bit more flexibility, and yun nga, you work from home. Pero right. it's at ano eh, hindi pa rin siya substantially bigger, di ba? Yung, yung income from a $3 per hour client. And isa lang yung client mo nun. Right. Isa lang, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Was the wife working as well? Parang tulong ba kayo? Yeah, yeah. She was working full-time. Okay. No, no. So parang tag team kami. So parang uh, she gave me support din, no? Kasi uh, I couldn't have done that online thing at the start kung wala siya. Kasi nga, wala pa akong income at that time. Although I had parang small gigs here and there locally lang parang uh, photography engagements here and there pero hindi siya consistent kaya um, it was a great help to me to have my wife there um, during that initial start yeah yeah that's cool mm. yeah. so and then um, obviously sabi nga nakakagulat you know like mm. somebody a client lets go of you uh, all of a sudden you're left you know wondering anong kasunod nito what do I do next and normally people would start looking for another client. Is that right? Right. right. Same. Was that the case with you as well? Ganon din ba yung ginawa mo? Mm, yep, exactly. So, um, after that engagement ended, scramble a little. So, I went back to online jobs at PH because yun yung, yun yung alam ko. And that's where I got my first client. So, I thought it would be another opportunity. No? Hanap tayo doon. Baka meron pa. Um, meron naman. Pero what ended up happening was it was a super low rate and that time naka time tracker na ako so parang from from yung initial start ko ron, it got even worse ngayon naka tied na talaga ako sa desk ko kasi i have to log in uh, my time mm-hmm. and yung client na yun was um super demanding kasi nga um since panic mode ako i i didn't have a choice i had to accept the first one basically who interviewed me and who accepted me parang it got worse in terms of yung client and the job that I did although it was still vid- video editing pero ngayon naka time bound na ako and super demanding ng client um, hindi siya as hindi siya as helpful as my first client in terms of sharing knowledge and research uh, pinabayaan lang niya ako and all he wanted from me was an output so that was another parang harsh um, reality for me of um, yun yung experience ko with freelancing basically at that time must have been <laughs> I couldn't imagine uh, although, <laughs> oh, some of us a lot of us probably have some similar journeys as well mm-hmm. right kasi nga we're so accustomed to the typical you know hanap ng client na parang employee ka pa rin talaga na right. you look for it basically uh, that's what you try to do mm-hmm. um, lang doon like you said um you know, it's it's not gonna last forever. Yung engagement mo with the client is not gonna last forever. So you're gonna end up just having to find another one again, find another one. And the the life that you try to escape, yung yung nine to five corporate mo, yeah, translated kumbaga, <laughs> kumbaga reincarnated into a different form. Nasa bahay yeah. ka. Exactly. Anyway. Exactly. Oh, let's get to the interesting part. Um. Hmm. Of the, uh, I want to get into the part where you you encountered the community, the tribe, um, the tribe, and mm-hmm. una community lang eh, di ba? Right, you, you right got, community. You were part of the free community first, tapos later on the tribe. And mm-hmm. I remember pa nga, we went through the thirty day client getting blueprint together. So mama yapa kwento natin. But before yeah. that, I wanna go to our viewers muna. So guys, mm-hmm. um, all throughout the interview, 
we'd love to you know have you guys tag people inside the group pa rin. and also share with us some of your takeaways okay during the course of the interview i'm sure meron sa inyo makaka-relate sa nangyari kay John uh, some of you may have questions i'll try to entertain one or two guys if you want to throw in a question or two um pwede uh, we'll, we'll ask that a little later on uh, but right now just keep tagging people para you know uh, marami rin yung makapakinig and makapanood sa, sa interview natin with John and uh, later on uh, also uh, si John is going to start sharing some of the dirty details ika nga of uh, <laughs> what what helped him uh, really escape yung yung cubicle world and that that 9 to 5 grind kumbaga so John um was it towards the end of uh, 2018 kumbaga when you started uh how, when did you exactly learn about the free community na meron tayo right rod um <clears throat> yeah parang uh, i'm i'm actually bef- before the end of 2018 pa no, siguro around july august of 2018 uh, while i still had yung first um client ko um I came across naalala ko it was a Facebook ad eh, of Chief JTL and um naalala ko pa yung reaction ko noon that time was sino po tong sino po tong taong tong ano gumagawa ng video and um parang teaching freelancing parang ganoon parang negative kagad yung ano ko yung um, yung mindset ko at that time I don't know why um but uh, somehow siguro na work pa din kasi I I clicked on it and I ended up dun sa newsletter ni Chief. Actually, yun yung first ano ko talaga with the tribe, the newsletter. And mm-hmm. uh, at that time, meron siyang, um, it was a parang four-part free workshop where you go through um, yun nga, four parts of how the tribe works. And naalala ko ron na nung binabasa ko siya, hinatid ko yung wife ko sa work. Nung pa na ako, inaisip ko talaga na, Ano po tong ginagawa kong freelancing? Parang hindi ito yung base dun sa nabasa ko from Chief. Parang may iba palang kind of freelancing. There's a different way uh, to do this freelancing thing. And naalala ko, napaisip talaga ako. I remember the moment talaga na natulala lang ako driving home na parang there's a better way. There's a better way than what I am doing right now. Kasi ito, what I'm doing right now is basically yun nga, reincarnate of the corporate job and um, in order for me to earn more, I would have to um, spend more time to earn more. Kasi nga, diba, my income is tied to my time. As nung nabasa ko yung newsletter ni Chief, I was like, wow, there's a, there's a different way. And it opened my mind. So yun, yeah. around uh, end of uh, August of 2018, dun ko na, na, na discover yung tribe. Through the newsletter and eventually dun sa free group then. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So um something about the four part lesson diba mm-hmm. and remember that clearly because i i saw that as well <laughs> um what was the one thing that kind of struck you the most doon sa, sa four part lesson eh? na parang sabi mo one was he's doing it without being tied to you know yung value mm-hmm. niya being tied to the hours worked what right. what other things na parang striking sa na parang hindi talaga nilubayan yung isip mo na like, there's something here Right, right, yeah. Great question, Ron. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, one of the things that struck me was uh, nung sabi niya na you don't have to have experience or credentials to land a premium client. And you don't even have to do the work before you get paid. Kasi, di ba, sa corporate, you have to do the work first before you get paid sa 15 or 30. And even dun sa initial um, freelancing gig scope, I had to do the work before I was paid and sabi ni chief no you, you you can actually get paid even before you do a uh, single hour of work or a single um, output of work and dun talaga parang na, na reverse talaga yung mind ko when it comes to freelancing uh, kasi yeah it was a totally different approach from you know the typical uh, freelancing that that I knew of at that time and um, yun it really um, it really stuck with me that I wanted to learn that brand freelancing. You know, na stuck sa mind ko and I actually encountered that time Ron na open yung tribe and I really wanted to enroll but at that time uh, hindi ko pa siya afford <laughs> and I was like, uh, na, um, I'll I know maybe this isn't the right time for me yet. Uh, but I will follow the newsletter 
And um, even though hindi ako nakapag-join, andun siya sa, in my mind, in my heart. And um, yun yung parang guiding light ko. Eventually, I will be, yung goal ko then was, simple lang was to join the tribe. <laughs> But I set that in my mind. I want to join the tribe eventually so I can learn this freelance, this brand of freelance. Right, right. So, is it safe to say na, yun nga, prior to encountering John and his newsletter and that yung mga bagay na tinuturo niya, na you were the kind of freelancer that na iniisip mo, you had to build your portfolio. Parang you had to accumulate all these credentials from past work para maipakita mo to future clients. So then, hopefully, hoping na, or crossing your fingers na that would help increase your value sa market. Was that the yeah. same thing prior to encountering John as well? Yeah, exactly. Parang I have to build a beautiful portfolio, right? Build that um, something to show the clients, something impressive to show them. And I was even thinking, Ron, of parang I need to learn more skills para, di ba, dami kong ma-offer. If I can yeah. offer a lot more skills, I can charge more. So, yun yung parang that was my mindset then before joining the tribe. And and why do you think that's very dangerous, especially for people who might be starting out? Yung asin yung kasi marami tayo dito sa workshop or sa community rather mm. na like zero experience. You know, they really don't have any. May idea sila what freelancing is, but mm-hmm. uh, a lot of them were probably thrust into this kasi ngayon ng yaring pandemic, lalo na this year, or right. some of the exploring alternatives uh, from their usual or your typical na mga trabaho. Uh, but yun nga, going back. Yung idea of building a portfolio, you know, uh, accumulating past work, uh, impressing the client, sabi mo nga. Mm-hmm. What I think that's, you know, a little bit dangerous if you wanna be a successful freelancer na ganun yung mindset mo. Right, right. Uh, yeah, super, it's super, uh, sabi mo nga, around dangerous. Kasi mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're stuck in the mindset na kailangan mo may magandang portfolio, kailangan mo all these skills, What ends up happening is hindi ka hindi ka magsa start hindi ka magte take action. You're always in this mode of of learning. You're always in this mode of parang um, thinking na you're not good enough and that you need to improve. You know you need to um, accumulate all this knowledge and all these skills before you start. And yung ang danger talaga nun is not starting. Kasi de ba what um, how are you gonna achieve your freelancing goals if you don't even start and you're paralyzed? by the thought of trying to build your portfolio and yun yung isang na natutunan ko from the tribe is that um, you don't need to be super knowledgeable about the the skill or the offer that that you want or that you want to focus on you just need to put in a little bit of time i would say two weeks two weeks is a short time right Ron? to to learn a skill and parang ano lang um parang get your feet wet the rest you can learn by doing kasi most of the skills that I learned actually I learned on the job kasi iba, tal- iba talaga yung theory lang you know reading the reading in the books or watching videos it's different from actually performing the work when you're doing the work kasi and dami mong may encounter na problems na challenges and you will, you will be forced to come up with um, creative ideas to to solve those problems and the only way you can do that is to actually do the work so you yeah. instead of waiting for Um, instead of waiting for having this great portfolio, great skills, um, just have enough, learn enough of that one thing that you want to focus on and then learn the rest by doing or on the job. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I always say just understand what goes on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not even, you know, you don't even need to really know the the details of what needs to be done. Uh, just have an understanding of how things work, kumbaga, and then, you know, on the fly, sabi mga, while you're doing it, you, right. you probably, are going to learn most most of it. The other thing I just want to add to that, yung isa pang danger, I think, of focusing on, you know, accumulating skills or portfolios and whatnot, is it takes your focus away from the market that you want to serve and right, make right. self, di ba? Um, and alam naman natin sa tribe or at least from what we teach inside the tribe, sabi ko nga lagi, it's market-centric. The, the main thing is the market. It's not about you. It's not about your skills. It's not about what you've accomplished in the past. It's always about the people that you want to serve. So that simple mindset for me is is such a huge thing. Uh, na parang mind blowing nga yung concept eh, no? Na parang oh, ano? Why why didn't I think of that before? 
tama. Obviously, you want to serve somebody or a group of people, then focus on them rather than yourself. So I think that's that's one more thing that we need to keep in mind. Uh, so let's forward a little bit, John. Mm-hmm. To, we're in the tribe. Sabi mo, hindi ka join uh, mm-hmm. the fr- because you didn't have enough funds to to, to join. Um, let's move forward to early 2019. Or was mm-hmm. it early 2019? Yeah, early 20. Uh, early 2020 actually. It went this year, year long. Yeah, yeah. So February was when John opened the 30-day client getting blueprint. And I think mm-hmm. that was the first time I actually met you. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, so obviously you jumped on the opportunity kahit na 30 days lang to. Tumatak mo sa isip mo nung in-announce ni John oh, ito na. Hindi pa exactly the tribe pero at least, you know, a little semblance of it, kumbaga. Right, right. Uh, naalala ko parang birthday promo yun eh. The, the, the original pr- price was discounted pa nga eh. Sabi ko, ito na, yung, <laughs> ito na yung parang foot in the door ko sa tribe. Kasi basically, it's, it's still the tribe naman eh with chief. Uh, it's just broken down into a smaller program. Yep. So naisip ko, this is the perfect opportunity for me. And um, ang maganda dun, maganda dun kasi from what I read is that Merong actionable steps per day, di ba? Yun yung, yun yung at that time kailangan ko. I need to have parang uh, what do I need to do per day to get closer to yung goal ko or yung uh, ideal freelancing business ko. Kaya I was excited to join. Some takeaways. Uh, let's see. Takeaways you can learn more by doing. Sabi ni Nelly. Uh, sabi ni Susan, there's uh, dangers of not starting. Gaya na sinabi mo. Um, yeah. And you know, Totoo talaga. I mean, um, a lot of us probably, you know, we're in that trap at one point or another in our freelance uh, journeys. Uh, so it's all about really taking that first step forward, diba? Um, so 30-day client getting blueprint. How was your experience there, bro, when you were inside the, the 30-day program? Right, right. Um, super saya na actually. Y- yung mini community that we built there, um, Ron, was super, parang yun yung first taste ko of, of having a freelance community. Eh. Kasi before that, I was doing it all by myself. Actually, I, there was a point nga na inisip ko, ako lang ba yung freelancer <laughs> dito? Of course, that wasn't true. Pero in my mind, that was parang wala akong, in my circle of uh, friends, wala akong makakumpera na freelancer talaga. And I always had this thought na, I can't, parang wala akong, I can't relate to anybody else and um, I was looking for this community to be a part of and that's what the 30-day client getting blueprint parang helped me introduce me to you it introduced me to a lot of people that I know right now in the tribe actually so parang it was it was really an eye-opening experience and in terms of not just the skills um, but the community aspect of it and um, naalala ko pa ron, um, I, I remember the time I asked you about the discovery call Kasi, um, although it was part of the 30-day client getting blueprint, uh, hindi kasama dun yung, yung script, eh, diba? the exact script to follow. And um, we kept asking you to <laughs> to parang guide us and we formed a little group. And naalala ko pa, nasa kotse ako nun, nung nag-call tayo. <laughs> and you broke down to me, what is the purpose of a discovery call? Yun yung parang first um, experience ko talaga with the discovery call itself. Kung ano yung purpose niya, ano yung, how do you break it down? Although, um, I, d- I don't I didn't have the exact script but I realized I don't really need the exact script no? I just need to understand ano ba yung purpose ng discovery call into helping the client right yun yung naalala ko na parang key takeaway ko at that time and I want to share din Ron na during the 30 day client getting blueprint I actually chose a a niche na I'm uh, a different niche from what I'm doing now and although Parang Malaysia, it wasn't really the niche na I wanted. I still learned a lot. So yun yung, um, because I followed the steps, I took action. Even though mali yung niche na napili ko, it was still applicable to the next niche that I chose. Kaya yan din ang message, isang message na gusto ko i-share sa, sa people here in the community is that kahit magkamali ka in choosing a niche, it's okay kasi madami ka pa matututunan along the way that you will use eventually once you choose a niche na para talaga sa'yo. Yeah. So, don't be afraid to make mistakes, lalo na sa niche. Kasi, um, ang dami ko kasi nakikita ng questions na, paano yung mali yung niche ko? Paano yung, ano, it just paralyzes you kasi okay lang na magkamali in choosing a niche kasi you'll still learn from doing. 
Right, right. That's <laughs> practice. I always say then, uh, it what matters most is you learn the principle behind the things that you're doing. Because mm-hmm. you know the the things, yung mga templates, yung mga strategies, and all of that. While they are important and they are the things that kind of bring you closer to your goal, pero a better understanding of what you know why you need to do these these things is probably you know puts you ahead leaps and bounds uh, of other freelancers as well. Uh, may nag type okay. sa comment natin si Wena. Fake it until you make it. Not exactly Wena. We don't mm-hmm. eh, you know ayos sana natin yung fake it until you make it. It's more of what we're trying to teach here is you learn as much as you can about the market and then try to find solutions so you're not gonna fake it uh, if you don't have experience you're gonna be upfront and tell your client na wala ako experience but I really want to help you out uh, and a lot of prospects or clients really appreciate yung honesty ng mga tao and I I'm sure alam mo to dyan, sa loob ng tribe we have a ton of people na zero experience mm-hmm. and because they were upfront with the prospect and they they really you know they have this heart to help na talagang ang intentions nila is to help the business move forward you know clients still get them kasi yeah. you know, that it's the honesty that they really appreciate um i want to go back to some of the comments here sabi ni mike he's the current version of you daw when he was in 2018 so he's probably in the same boat that you were back in 2018 <laughs> got it Gratefully, Uh, kung ano yung mga ginawa pa ni John later on na share niya Kat uh, Gonzaga said retainer was mentioned in the post how did you ask your client mamaya we'll, go, we'll get to that point Kat pag-usapan natin yung current client ni John uh, sabi ni Abby focus on focus not about you it's always about who you want to serve exactly uh, Kat don't be afraid to make mistakes sabi ni Christian great interview so far I'm also a member of the 30 day blueprint I had to pause on day 11 and that's fine I mean you can you know go at it again at, at your own pace and dami na nating feedback rito uh, pero we'll go mm-hmm. back to that later um, so super interesting na tayo so 30 day client was your first encounter of how the tribe works mm-hmm. uh, mostly just the actionable items on a day to day basis nakaland ka ba ng client during that 30 day period John? Yeah, I was. Actually, nakalaan ako ng client ko. It was actually my first retainer client. And mm, okay. um, although hindi siya premium uh, talaga in the in the sense of yung the tribe, I don't know, um, how we we value, uh, how we measure premium, it was still a win for me kasi I moved away na from hourly to a retain, retainer agreement. And the way that I got that retainer was from the start pa lang, um, when I got him on the call and I got on my fir- on my DC I was able to diagnose his problem and what he needed and um, after that when I sent my proposal he needed a shopper hour saying I knew better na I learned from the 30 day client getting blueprint na it's um, it focused on the output what can I um, help the client with so instead of hourly I I packaged my proposal in a way na merong fixed number of videos for this uh, fixed amount or for this fee and um, that's how I got my first um, retainer client basically from the start pa lang hindi na siya hindi na ako dumaan per hour um, retainer agreement na siya right and and kamusta yung retainer client is, he, is that client still with you or wala na rin yeah actually he's still with me and ito yung maganda ron nag increase na yung engagement namin so mm-hmm. um, in Uh, far cry from the first uh, ing- ag- agreement namin maganda kasi yung experience niya wa- with me and while we were working I was able to get him results so parang na-upsell ko siya into making more videos and syempre more videos I was able to charge more and um, yeah yeah, that's one thing na, um, that I learned is um, if you really want to help yung client um, parang kumbaga it didn't matter na hindi siya premium because from the call I got na parang this is a client that I can help and gusto ko nagusto ko yung attitude niya the way he approached his business and I could tell na he was really serious about growing so you and I accepted him and until now we have a great relationship nice 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 so mm-hmm. part yan nung yung pinost niya natin ano na right. uh, are most of your clients right now by the way on a retainer basis yeah Or- actually actually all of them wala na akong per hour ron wala na yung mga time tracker wala I don't I don't do that anymore okay so that answers your question Kat si Kat was <laughs> asked about the retainer client um, right right 
he did it. Let me just reiterate kung anong sabi niya. He took the client on initially at a lower rate. Uh, delivered so much value to that client. Basically helped the client out kung ano yung mga goals nila sa business. Mm-hmm. You know, the client naturally wanted to keep his services. I think for the most part, ganun lang naman ang ano, di ba, John? Like, mm. all you need to do is get your foot in the door. Right. And then, you know, you know, give it your best. And then the clients usually, sila naman yung ano eh, sila naman yung nag-decide na, oh, I can't let go of this person. Hindi ko pwedeng, hindi pwedeng mawala itong tulong na binibigay ng taong ito sa akin. And so they, you know, they would probably, unless of course, it's a one-time project talaga. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Pero for for businesses, typically, lalo na if your positioning ng ng service mo has something to do with either lead generation or conversions ng ng mga sales nila, there's a huge chance, there's a very big likelihood that you're gonna be, you know, uh, getting retainer clients uh, moving forward kung bala. So, right. uh, just some comments here. Um, So instead of sabi ni Chris, instead of fake it till you make it, try it till you make it. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> to put it. Uh, so bukan, just keep trying. And uh, the funny thing is, sometimes we fail. Tama ba, John? It doesn't, it doesn't mean we all succeed at the first try. Can you speak a little bit about yung ganyan, yung mga failures? Do you have any of those experiences as well? Yeah, yeah. Super, yeah, tama. Parang... Um... It's okay to make mistakes. Um, actually, itong, itong retainer client Kron, the one I mentioned, um, another strategy strategy that I tried with him was before I took him on, nag test edit kami, or uh, parang it was a sample project to see if he liked the work that I did, but at the same time to see then if I like working with him. Parang both ways. Yeah. So with video editing, kasi it's very hard to um, mahirap kasi siya present in a way na concrete kaagad sa client kasi we all have different styles we have different preferences and i learned um throughout uh, my career na when it comes to video editing you have to give them a sample of what you can do and the best way to do that is through a test edit kahit uh, it's very uh, short video lang hindi naman siya kailangan full video talaga kumaga to test if um you and the client work well together so Specifically right. for video editing, a test edit is really effective. Right, right. I right. think for services do the same thing as well. Like for example, people who do Facebook ads, they do a quick audit. Right. Of yeah. Thing, yeah. Um, si Coach Mark Allen, who's my coach in inside the tribe, mm-hmm. it's a lot about that. Yung sampling and tawag niya dun eh. Like you give right. people sample. Of, maga, you give them a taste. Parang sa sa supermarket, there's a free taste. Diba? Right. Yeah. Exactly. You have to touch their senses, kumbaga. Yung maramdaman nila how it feels like to be working with you, what sort of results you, you can bring, na tailor fit din naman dun sa business nila. So, you know, a lot of people do that, uh, na parang, oh, sige, um, you know, I'll diagnose what your needs are sa business, and then I'll give you a taste of what's uh, what solution I can provide. Um, and usually, dun, dun talaga, ano eh, doon nagde-decide yung mga prospects to get you for their services maybe may a comment Malvin fail until you make it yes I guess right, you could right. <laughs> as well uh, so kalimutan na natin yung fake it kasi medyo uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. negative kasi yung parang faking niya yes um, mm. anyway so now finally um, let's let's move into the part where you actually got into the tribe so that was mm. around or of was it summer of this year around yeah yeah around summer yeah yeah How was the experience like? No, finally, finally, ito na sabi mo nga, <laughs> you you wanna be a part of the tribe, right? <laughs> your foot in, nanjan ka na. How was the experience for you? Yes, yes. So, nung nakapasok ta ako, the first thing talaga na um, na parang na overwhelmed ako was the community. Grabe yung support ng community. Um, one of the things that we have to do, Ron, diba, when you join the tribe is you post an introduction. Of, of yourself, what you do, the the niche or the market that you serve and what you offer, and super ang, ang ganda lang ng reception, ang ganda ng parang everybody's cheering you on, uh, wanting you to succeed, and it was like no other community talaga that I've ever been a part of as a freelancer, and it felt like honestly parang cheesy, no, but it felt like coming home to me. That's how it felt like, and uh, sabi ko. I'm gonna make the most of this opportunity because 
um, andito na yung skills, andito na yung community, parang um, ang, if I fail, it's because of me na talaga. It's, if I fail, it's because of my inaction. Because I already have the resource, the community, dito sa tribe, and all I really need to do is take action. Right, right, exactly. Actually, I just want to add to that na mm-hmm. welcome. Actually, ito yung maganda sa loob ng tribe that I always, I'm super proud of. The same feeling that you get when you're welcomed into the tribe, carries on until you're like I've been in the tribe for like two and a half years now if we count because I was part of batch one and I did come out but uh, up until now like the same feeling when you were welcomed in you mm-hmm. know you sort of you sabi mga people cheering you on people wanting you to win it's it's always been there so there's no reason for me to, to really leave the tribe kumbaga and I think right, right. So you feel the same way. How have you been able to take advantage of your membership sa tribe? Kwento mo sa amin, ano na yung mm-hmm. change when it comes to one, siguro getting clients. Mm-hmm. Number two, yung mindset mo na when it comes to to getting clients and delivering value to your yes. clients. Well, uh, siguro let's start with those two. Anong kaibahan na ngayon ever since you got into the tribe? Right, right. So, um, Ever since I got to the tribe, Ron, hindi na ako online jobs lang. <laughs> so, hindi na ako stuck to yung freelancing platforms like online jobs or Upwork. Um, now, I'm more of yung organic outreach talaga through Facebook, through LinkedIn, through cold emails. Yung isang natutunan ko sa tribe, clients are everywhere, you know. We just have to reach out to them. And it's not necessarily nasa freelancing platforms lang kasi... Yep. Um, ang yun nga isang isang tinuturo sa tribe is we build relationships, di ba Ron? We when we reaching out to a client, ang ang ap- approach nat is how can we help them? It's not how can we close them, kasi yun yung uh, mindset ko before. Eh. It's how can we help this client get the results that they want, di ba? And um, if our offer fits in with um, their problem, then maybe we can help. So yung isang uh, different approach when it comes to connecting with clients and getting clients is it's not just to close them but it's how can I help and how can I how can my offer deliver results for them and um, isang ano ko pala ron na natutunan um, during the 30 day client and even more so when I got into tribe was yung mindset I started with yung limiting beliefs it's something that I struggled talaga um, initially kasi I had this limiting belief na I wasn't good enough and it came from in um from a childhood experience and every time I reached out to a cl- or a prospect lagi kong inuunahan na parang bakit ikaw why would they choose you You're, why why are why would they need your service parang ganun parang inuunahan ko na yung sarili ko even before I reach out and di ko maintindihan bakit ganun and doon ko lang siya nalaman when chief shared yung limiting belief And when I got into the tribe, yung mga um, clarity, um, more of mindset stuff talaga na um, that you have to overcome first before you can really be um, effective as a freelancer. And that was something that I had to uh, take head on and something that I'm super uh, appreciative sa tribe. No? It's not just uh, most kasi na freelancing Um, online is that they teach you the skills, right? You, they teach you um, Facebook ads or the technical aspect of it. Um, but even more so than that, there's the mental aspect of it, eh, which is yun, yun nga, your mindset, mo, how you approach um, clients. Because even if you have all the strategies in the world, the best strategies in the world, if if you're limited by your beliefs, and every one of us has di- uh, different limiting beliefs, no? Um, but yun nga, you won't be able to execute on those strategies if you have uh, a limiting mindset. So, yun yung parang nag, nag-open up talaga sa mind ko when it comes to um, becoming the freelancer that I want to be is to let go of yung mga uh, limiting beliefs ko, mm-hmm. let go of my judgmental um, tendencies um, when it comes to um, reaching out, and yun nga, focus on the market and how I can serve them. So, that's the main parang siguro Um, thing that I took away from or being from being in the tribe no? apart from the community was the the mindset right right you spoke a little bit about clarity getting clarity on mm-hmm. on it to do a freelance journey mo. I'm a big uh, proponent of clarity when it comes to freelancing 
Um, and I often speak about um, y- yung making sure that you qualify the clients. Tama ba? I'm sure you're familiar with this. When we talk right. about mm-hmm. yung client assets and all of that, mm-hmm. they big talk about where the client is in their business journey as well. Um, kasi laging, laging nagiging tanong din yan eh. Na how exactly do you qualify? Paano mo ba na ensure na itong prospect na to that you're gonna take on is someone who can benefit from your service and at the same time won't lead you to work, you know, long hours or sobrang hirap yung mga gawain. Um, what can you say about that? How important is learning yung yung principle of, you know, qualifying your clients to your success as a freelancer? Right, right. Uh, so, one thing I learned is that if you, during the process of discovery, kasi, once you get to know the client's assets, um, the more you, the better you can qualify the prospect, kasi, the closer you are to getting them results. Diba, Ron? We always talk about the tribe na, uh, how can we get results? And <clears throat> the, the, the fastest way you can do that is to help somebody who already has the assets and who has the, kumbaga, the, the characteristic or the attitude that you are lurk- looking for in an ideal client. So part of the clarity exercise that in Baronsa Tribe is identifying um, your ideal client, what he or she looks like, ano yung attitudes niya, ano mm-hmm. yung um, assets niya. Because uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to find that client who is parang almost there, <laughs> parang 80% there. That way you can deliver them results um, or, or wins in the shortest amount of time. And because you qualify the client, um, that that helps your business as well. Because you you prove that you can get 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 them results. If you if you don't qualify a client, kasi, or if you just if you don't have clarity sa, sa client that you want to work with, mas mahirapan ka to get them results. And if you can't get them results, ma frustrate sila. Mm-hmm. And iko din. So you parang you question you question your ability. You question your um, ability to help, and so if you qualify a client, you choose the you have clarity over who you want to help and who are the assets that they need to have. Then you'll have a much better time. Right. Okay. Now, for those who might be, sure, we have some you know first time in the freelancing industry. Dito, they mm-hmm. might fuse. What are we talking about? These two na client asset, etc., etc. <laughs> No. Let's turn this into a little more, you know, actionable conversation. Right, right. Your business, for example, um, mm-hmm. John, right now, what are some of the things that you're looking for sa isang ideal client? Give us like a few things. Right, right. So, right. Uh, thanks, Ron. So, um, since I'm helping uh, online entrepreneurs, specifically those who have um, courses, online courses or online trainings, Um, who want to market on YouTube? First, I ask them is, or what? One of the things I look for is, ano ba yung setup nila sa office nila or sa bahay nila? Can they easily shoot video? Because I'm helping them produce video, pero it's a it's a team effort. I can only edit what they produce or what they film. If pula silang mafilm, wala kong may edit, right? So I I need to ensure na meron siyang uh, process in place. And meron siyang setup in place to be able to consistently shoot videos. So one of my that's one uh, most yeah most important um, aspect. And the next is um, baga, um before on uh, I wanted to start with those na meron na talagang established na channel no uh, may may number of subscribers na um, but I found na um, I could still help those na who want to start. As long as they have the uh, attitude that I'm looking for, medyo mahirap siya i quantify no. Pero um, parang I get that from the call mismo na parang I gauge the client kung um, okay ba yung ability niya or yung attitude niya towards shooting videos. Yeah, do you have qualifiers such as dapat meron na silang existing subscribers things like that or may mga views na sila for past videos mga ganyan or since you help grow engagement din eh no on the platform mm-hmm. isa ba yun sa mga are those some of the qualifiers that you look for yeah yeah exactly Ron so um, I look for 
um, if they have number of videos na if they have um, followers not necessarily on YouTube no kasi I, I do have clients na who want to start pa lang. but let's say for example meron silang followers on Instagram or meron silang followers on Facebook maybe that's something that we can leverage to the main YouTube platform uh, so yeah that's one of the qualifiers right and I guess mm-hmm. first the question ni Anna uh, Dominique na how do you know if you and the client are fit so uh, Anna there's a lot of things actually that go into um, qualifying a client so that you know you're a good fit pero that's one of them uh, finding out yung mga existing clients or existing assets rather na mga mm-hmm. natin um, I want to speak a little bit about that as well kasi nga ito yung parang lagi ko rin napapansin na nagiging struggle din ng, ng maraming freelancers um, the way freelancing is being taught by the tribe and John is that um, you want to be able to meet a client at a certain point in their business. Okay? Meaning, they should be at a point where the solution that you provide, yung offer mo, will give them maximum value for very little effort that you put in. That's ideal. Okay? Not all clients uh, you, that you meet will be in the, that boat. Pero ideally, that's where you want to be. Kasi nga, what we're trying to establish, diba? Lagi natin sinasabi, we want a highly sought after, highly paid, stress-free freelance business. Um, and some people they get the sought after, they get the highly paid, pero they get they don't get the str- the ano, ano yan? stress-free <laughs> portion of it. So kailangan din, uh, it's a huge consideration then, di ba? Um, so that's that's one of them, Anna. Of course, lahat ng mga details nito, all the things that you need to know about qualifying clients about making sure that you're a good fit. Uh, they're inside, you know, the tribe. Most of the the, the things that we teach, doon namin ginagawa lahat yung mga bagay na yun. So, since you mentioned it, Anna, kung curious kayo, guys, ano ba yung mga bagay na yun na tinuturo namin inside the tribe that will allow you to really match yourself with the perfect, not perfect naman, ideal, ang, ang tamang word. The ideal client for your business, your freelance business. Okay, siguro just comment below with the word clarity. So, we're comment with the word clarity below for those who are just tuning in or those of you who want to learn more kung paano ba namin kinakwalify yung mga clients, what, what are the things that need to be in place and all of that. Comment clarity and once again, we'll have some of our um, team members sa community reach out to you and see if we can help you out in that regard. Um, so, just going back, John. So, right now, five clients on retainer basis, tama? Five clients on retainer basis. Is that correct? Yes, tama. Yes, Ron. So, sabi mo, you have two team members right now. Uh, one that you're, you just recently hired and then you have brother mo baka mo, yung isa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, what does, ano, what does, kumbaga, what's in store for you as far as your freelance business in the future? Anong plans moving forward? Right, right. So, um, my plan is really to parang create a system, have a system in place na um, I can have a team that can do the kumbaga, the operations part and I can focus more on um, building relationships um, with the client or looking for building relationships with prospective clients. Um, the envision ko yung ideal ano ko is na I will be supervising the creative work na lang. Kumbaga, parang creative director na uh, hindi na ako dun sa actual um, editing and operations, more of the strategy or the bigger picture of the company that's how i you know that's my goal to build a system <laughs> and i think it's important na you you start things right on the correct process kasi nga that's what allows you to kagaya yung sinasabi mo you want to be able to exit certain aspects of the business like let's say yung fulfillment right. or your operations or kasi maraming aspect yan may lead generation kayo hmm. You know, sales, you have the fulfillment, you have the business development, you, you have, you know, as a CEO, you want to grow your business and all of that. I think that's the beauty of what is being taught inside the tribe is that it allows you to exit certain parts. Ibig sabihin, hindi na ikaw yung involved sa lahat ng aspeto ng business mo. Um, yun nga, no? I've seen a lot of people inside the tribe that do similar things where right now, they are the CEO of their business, meaning they're the chief executive officer and what they do is they make decisions that are good for the business moving forward rather than 
kumbaga day in day out work inside of the business so they have a more kumbaga a different perspective na a higher view of their business na nakikita nila everything that's going on and they can make decisions that are beneficial for everyone inside um I think that's the that's the main thing then na gusto nating ipaabot then for those who are watching na freelancing while it's a good gig it's a good side income source it can also be the main thing it can be the business it can be you know something na pwede mong you can carry on for years and years to come diba uh it's going to be your source of ano uh, of your main source of income kumbaga for especially for a lot of people inside the tribe nagagawa na nila yon um it's been a super interesting interview that we've had John I'm so happy to finally get in touch with you again after you know almost a year uh, right right <laughs> happy to see your progress um what's the one thing you want to leave behind sa mga sa mga nanonood sa atin today what's the main thing your 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 big, biggest message for them kumbaga right right uh, so yeah uh, again going back to yung uh, point ko about um um overthinking things no before you take action uh, it's just that Uh, I want to leave you with the message now. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Because most uh, aspiring freelancers or freelancers, um, they stop taking action because they're waiting for everything to fall into place. And they don't realize that if you take action, things will start falling into place. Very well said. Uh, thank <laughs> you for, for sharing that, John. And uh, for... Again, everyone who's watching today, um, we're super happy that you you were able to join us. Need to say interview ni John, and we appreciate John everything that you've uh, shared with us. Uh, all the best moving forward sa sa business mo, and we hope to see see John. By the way, if you want to search him on YouTube, I'm not promoting anything. Pero if you want to search him, he's got. This. <laughs> uh, go ahead and check out his videos. Lang he has a lot of tips din doon for people who are starting out in freelancing you know i've seen quite a few of those videos myself actually not subscribe also your bro so <laughs> thanks bro so <laughs> kasi ano I, there's some really good stuff i i promise yeah. you won't regret subscribing kung gusto man uh low key promotion to bro <laughs> <laughs> i like it bro i like it <laughs> all right it's an amazing interview i know there was somebody kanina na parang sabi niya no uh editor din pala video editor din daw i, I mm-hmm. hope been a super helpful uh sayo uh si christian ya tayon or, or something i'm not sure kung sino but anyway we can go back to that um thank you once again john for joining us this afternoon i really appreciate it uh regards to your wife and to your lovely daughters and uh, good mm-hmm. luck uh in the coming <laughs> uh, so, thanks ron thanks ron so much uh, super enjoyed this interview and uh hoping to see more from this community nice 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 and thanks again for everyone who tuned in today uh keep tagging pa rin and keep posting uh or typing in kung ano yung mga takeaways nyo we would love to hear from you guys um and also just a quick reminder in the coming days rather sa so thursday meron ulit tayong ama session so we're inviting another set of panel uh, of, of people rather to be part of the panel who will answer your questions I'm sure si Chris is already hard at work uh, possibly collecting some of the questions that you guys have. Uh, we'll, we'll post about that soon. Uh, so please look forward to that. Uh, Thursday yon 2pm. Uh, we're going to be back with the AMA sessions natin. Uh, thanks again guys and uh, we super appreciate you. I hope you guys have a good week ahead and uh, support nyo rin yung, ano natin, yung little fundraiser natin for, for helping out. Uh, yung mga nasalanta ng bagyo so we hope to see you guys there uh, thank you John thank you everyone and we'll see you guys again soon bye bye bye